YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. Look what we've got here, the Yuzhang F280. This thing is a brand new heli for us, 280 millimeter rotor. And yes, this thing comes in a box, very easy to put together. The battery is easy to get to, and we are ready to basically start this. We got ours in a ready to fly, but just full disclosure, we did not get the batteries expected for this, and it's supposed to use 21700s, two of them. They do not come with it. They also don't come with a charger for the provided, in our case, three times, 6S 1300 milliamp 40C packs. And so we're gonna go ahead and get this thing plugged in. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure my stick is down. There is a throttle hold, but you will get ambiguous warnings. This does come with a lanyard, so I'm gonna be a little bit careful here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and try to plug this in carefully and make sure nothing starts. Okay, listening, laying it down, giving myself a little bit of room, waiting for the initiation sequence. And as you can see, I'm gonna move just this stick. Yep, forward, backward, left, right. Y'all left, y'all right, nothing changed, that's good. I'm gonna move up, and as you can see, it starts spinning. This is 6S, it's gonna be pretty intense. And I think my lanyard is just a little bit too short. Also, while we're dealing with the cold, we got some warm jackets on, pretty cool, from Kimo, or Kim, Kimi, Kemi, Kemi Moto. Yeah, so anyway, we'll see if they work. Um, should be pretty exciting. Now, the throttle hold is definitely not off. That is now toward my belly, and you can see it's definitely working because as I move, everything is moving but not spinning, okay? So also there's 3D 6G on one of these, and then idle up, and idle up two. Okay, so I'm in normal, idle up one, idle up two. So obviously without that on, it would start spinning. I'm gonna demonstrate, throttle cuts off. Yep, so that's why you need to be very careful to have this towards your belly when you start that would be toward my belly on SB, okay, SB, S Bravo, okay? So switch Bravo. <clears throat> All right, so now, coming out of the lock, I'm in normal mode. I'm gonna go ahead and give some throttle. I'm actually gonna move my body over here, camera crew also. Got a little bit of wind, so I'm just gonna walk it around. Camera crew is gonna move back to where she was. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna just try. I don't know if I'm in auto leveling, I believe I am. So we're gonna let it stop. Give it a little bit of throttle. And we're in the air. But we're also not in auto leveling, okay? So for me, that is not acceptable. I need to figure out what I need to do to be in auto leveling. So when I move this toward me, toward my belly, now, I'm gonna go ahead and go up again. Now remember, I'm a bad heli pilot, but you might be a good heli pilot. Okay, so about 50% stick. There we go, that's auto leveling, guys. Very nice. Okay, very, very good. Very, very sensitive on the sticks, but controllable. The thing is noisy, it's a 6S helicopter. Me and the camera crew are gonna give it lots of room. It's not an overly large helicopter. It definitely makes a lot of noise. The wind is blowing it. It is not gonna be for the faint of heart if you're not used to flying. Look how touchy this is, guys. You see this? How big of a disparity there is between going up level and going down. It's not much, okay? Okay. So I guess we'll go over here and we'll land. Pause it. All right, sorry, we had a delivery. Okay, so we're gonna go back in to 6G toward my belly and away from my belly, and we're gonna take back off. So here goes nothing, guys. The 6G works really nice. It really is pretty easy to get up in the air, as you can see. The thing practically flies itself with the exception of getting blown by the wind. I'm not sure if that's a trim issue or a wind issue, but either way, I would say the thing looks really nice. Obviously, being that it's 6S, it's got some power to spare. It's pretty easy to control in terms of flying with the auto leveling. There's lots of pitch control, lots of pitch authority. I'm not feeling lacking, even though it is windy. That's up, and I did not go all the way, holy cow. So being a 6S, it's got some juice, so I'm just gonna show you this real quick. 
That is insane. That was all the way up on the sticks. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of room here, guys. The thing is not flying itself like some helis, but it's really close to flying itself. You can get a nice, cool scale looking flight performance by coordinating your turns. The flight controller is doing a really nice job of controlling the things that I don't want to control. But if you guys are doing 3D, you will have no problems flying this thing on 3D. As you can see, the wind is whipping. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just bring it over here by the flag just to show you. I don't wanna chop up my flag. Try to get over the tree line there, sorry guys. Going up overhead a little bit. Man, that thing is noisy. It's noisy, it's got different presence than like the M4 on 6S because you know you've got the power to do crazy. See, even in auto leveling on 6G, you've got a lot of down and even more up. So that's down. So you can really control this thing. I like the green, it pops, it's easy to see. Of course, we've got some nice sun today. That's something we haven't had much of lately. And if you guys are big on flying helicopters, you will appreciate the fact that this thing definitely does all the 3D stuff you want if you come out of the 3D 6G. Now I'm gonna go into idle up and see what happens, see if I still have auto leveling, which I believe I do. Yeah, it's still auto leveling the aircraft. So I went to the idle up. So instead of having the throttle going up and down, it's just mostly moving, of course, the pitch of the blades. Okay. So good controllability. And again, just keeping in mind that I am not a regular, ordinary, really good heli pilot. I mean, I kind of can hold my own. I can actually fly this thing without auto leveling, but I don't choose to do it because I kind of suck at it. Now I'm gonna go to idle up too. And as you can see, just a little bit more aggressive. The tail is keeping up really good for being a direct drive as opposed to being a belt driven or a pulley driven. It's really doing a good job of stabilizing the tail. I haven't seen that tail come out of position at all this whole time. So the flight controller and the ESCs are doing a great job. However, I gotta say, let's see what the speed is for how fast we can spin. Okay, now that's in 6G, keep in mind. A Little bit faster that way, not to be unexpected because of the nature of the way that the main rotor is spinning. You're gonna tend to spin with the torque roll a little bit faster, okay? But I really think it's pretty good for controllability. Again, this is not an NX10. This is not my primary controller. It's just the one that came with it, which is an Edge 3D, kind of like an open, open source jumper product. I just love that you've got such good ups. For being 6S, that should be expected. But it's a 6S 1300, it's so not a huge battery. It is kind of a big heli for the blade size, if you ask me. And I definitely can say, landing it's not gonna be a big deal. I can already tell it's gonna be good. I'm gonna go back to normal mode. So as you can see, I'm gonna flip the switch up here and I'm just gonna bring it a little bit further back for us, kind of keeping my orientation. Now the camera crew and I are good where we are. Camera crew, I'm gonna just bring it over here, make a nice, very easy landing, nothing crazy. Put the stick down put the throttle hold on and that's ready to go. So now I gotta say, a couple things to think about. Okay, first of all, are my red lights on? It's hard to tell in the dark. Yes, they are still on. This thing is keeping me warm and it's cold. My hands are getting cold, but I'm not cold, so that's nice. Secondly, is this thing gonna be capable of any of the 3D maneuvers you wanna do? My guess is you'll be able to do everything. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'll try to do a couple of flips, but just keep in mind, I'm not a great 3D pilot on helis. I don't even pretend to be one. Beep. Yeah, I heard a beep. So my guess is what that means is we got low voltage and I'm not seeing anything on this screen, but we do have some telemetry data that goes back and forth. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch into the other battery, which is right here. And I'm gonna show you, I got three batteries with mine. My recommendation with Helis is always get as many as you can get when you order them because they come for really cheap. 
okay? So I'm gonna show you exactly how to load the battery live and in person. We're gonna actually show the process. Obviously we have our throttle hold on and we've tested it by moving our throttle, our collective and everything is good. So we can go ahead and now grab this and feel safe. Now there's a release right here. Camera crew, if you could go to the other side, that'd be great. Right here, if you release this by lifting, you can pull with your index finger here. You don't even need to lift this, but if you lift it, it makes it even easier. And look how easy this is, guys. I love it. When it's easy to read, easy to battery an aircraft, you're more likely, there's a bald eagle right there. You're more likely to fly it, guys. It's over there. You see it? Yep. We had five bald eagles the other day we walked out. Yep. Or wait, is that a hawk? That might be a hawk. I think it's an eagle. Okay, so coming back to the point. Sorry, guys, I get distracted by bald eagles. Um, partly because bald eagles can destroy a helicopter like this if they wanted to fart on it. Okay, so strap comes undone. Velcro comes undone. Very easy. Take this, make sure it's not puffed, make sure it's not destroyed. I didn't feel like we pushed it very hard, but we also got distracted by delivery, which does happen from time to time, so we just kind of have to yield to those people. Okay, so we'll put it in like that. And we'll drop this in there. Special thanks to you delivery drivers out there. We know that you guys do a hard job during this time of year. Lots of people getting stuff delivered all the time anymore. We are one of those people. Okay, so this slides into the rail, just like that. Now look at the red thing as we snap it back. Did I get it in the rail? Yes, I did. And did it snap back? You guys see I went too far. I went too far with my rail. You guys see what happened? There, that's in the correct position now, okay? So now the second thing you have to do is you take your XT60 and you go ahead and plug it in. And I usually like to get it on the ground as quick as possible. And I wanna show you the warnings. Come around, camera crew. This did not give me the warnings because my throttle hold was on, okay? It's gonna warn you if you don't have your throttle hold on. Throttle hold is a finger and lifesaver for helis. And so if you're not used to using throttle hold, I would suggest that you get in the habit of using it, especially on unusual transmitters, meaning not your primary, okay? So throttle holds off. We're gonna come around here, okay? We're gonna fire up the throttle a little bit. I'm gonna get the tail pointed around into the wind, just like this. And then camera crew and I are gonna go back to our normal spot right there. And I'll take off here, push forward a little bit, right there, get her off the ground, Woo! there it is. Guys, like I said, very touchy in the center of the sticks. You see how little teeny minute movements will make that thing go up and down, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to try to do a couple of quick tricks. Remember, I don't do a lot of tricks, so don't hate me. I'm going to go into idle up one and then i'm going to come out of the 6g as soon as i get to a couple mistakes high i'm going to get the helicopter turned sideways okay so here we go so there it is guys so as you can see i flipped it over now i'm going to go into idle up two and that's as quick as it will come back to auto level for you so if you make a mistake, a boo-boo becomes not a brand new heli. All you have to do is be a couple mistakes high, and I'm gonna show you just how quick this works, okay? Now that's a huge feature, guys. If you don't know how to do this, figure it out. Okay, so we're out of, we're in regular flight mode now. So I'm in full control now. So upside down, and then flip it back. There we go, guys. I kind of pushed the limits a little bit. You know why? because I grabbed the wrong stick. Make sure you got the wrong, make sure you get the right stick if you want it to go back, okay? Very important. Make sure you get the right one. They're close to each other, okay? Again, not flying in the same controller that you're used to can make a big difference. Camera crew's gonna move about four steps and then she's gonna go back to the center of the driveway. Perfect, right there. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try this again. Okay, so now we're in 3D mode again. Just to give you an idea of how incredibly ambidextrous this is, there's full up, full down, 
and then I'm gonna flip back to 6G. And as you can see, 6G just takes right back over, flips that thing into orientation where you can see, hopefully with these clouds in the backdrop, that it is fully under control. And I am giving it some input in that I'm kind of giving it a direction with which to wander, okay? because as you can see, it does float around a lot more than some of the less sophisticated, less 3D capable helicopters that we've reviewed. I'm gonna go up over a little bit. There's something about being near these helicopters that will scare you if you're not a skilled pilot. And even with a skilled pilot, and we've seen some of the world's best 3D heli pilots at some of the events we've been to, and it is incredibly insane, the stuff they can do with helicopters. And I'm telling you, the right person on the sticks with this heli, there's no problem. You can do whatever you want, TikToks, flips, you know, you can do whatever you want. And I just don't know how to do most of them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back up here. We're gonna do one more. We're just gonna get up here like this. We're just gonna go upside down, right side up, and then back to 6G because that's what pansies do. Oh yeah. So now, the other thing is for the rest of people in the room watching me fly, knowing that I'm not a 3D heli pilot, I just wanna remind you, don't be ashamed. Just be aware of where you are. Don't pretend to be something you're not to impress your buddies because guess what that will leave you? It will leave you buying a new helicopter if you can survive your wife. So seriously guys, just know your skills work to get better, but don't necessarily push it just because you're trying to prove it to somebody else. All I'm gonna tell you is these 6S helicopters, even 3S helicopters are capable of basically expanding on what I can do, okay? So trying to get you guys a couple of different passes where camera crew is not gonna be scared. She does get a little bit scared with helis compared to other stuff that we review because she knows the power that they possess and so do I. But I gotta say guys, this thing makes it look easy because it really is pretty easy for me to pilot. Also, I gotta say, being able to switch back and forth in quick succession is the difference between. So the difference between being able to switch between 3D and 6G is really the difference between success or failure for a guy like me. And here's why. Because my absence of skill would ordinarily scare me from flying such a really capable and beautiful helicopter, and it should scare you too, we can all be happy that we have that feature. And I'm gonna tell you this, we haven't always had that there have been auto leveling modes for some time, but I'm gonna tell you what, there are a few that don't allow you to turn them on and off in quick succession. So if you want something that'll do that, <laughs> it's just sound impressive as all get out. That's in 6G by the way, which is, let's just show you again, okay. That is crazy guys. And still have a nice docile flight and again, not from some expert pilot here. We're just talking about regular old Brian Phillips RC that really barely flies helicopters if you get right down to it. This is the type of helicopter that I need, a helicopter that will let me do some maneuvering. I'm sorry, I gotta do another one. Okay, here we go. Idle up two, 3D. And it's just like, guys, okay, so now we're back in 6G instead of 3D. And you guys can see what happens is you get disoriented so quick if you're a not helicopter pilot. And it's like, you don't see people making a lot of passes like helicopters are airplanes because most people don't fly. Helicopters like their airplanes. But I gotta say, I kind of enjoy flying helicopters in a way that makes them like an airplane. I like <laughs> flying circuits with my helicopters and call me crazy, then that might be a little bit of an unusual quirk, 
about me, but look how tight the circuits are to the ground. I mean, it's not like I'm flying, you know, 20 feet up like I am now, okay? And if you get into trouble, just do that. Just do that. And by the way, you can hear that tail rotor just scream. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's like, leave me alone. No. <laughs> it's actually doing a pretty dang good job of keeping things where they need to be. Now, is it doing a good job of holding it exactly perfectly level? You know, to be honest, we haven't even done a calibration but the thing is doing a great job of doing what I tell it to do. And the only time there's any sort of bad behavior, it would be, be because of pilot error, okay? Now, this is not gonna have the struggles that you're gonna have with the Coast Guard helicopter or the Olive Drab Blackhawk. Here's why. Because this is actually a stick and boom 3D helicopter, in my opinion that just has some flight aids on it, okay? And that's why I like this helicopter, because you actually can fly the thing. Now, do you have to do crazy maneuvering? No, you don't, and that's why I love it. So without further ado, we're back into regular, regular flight mode. We'll do an inside out, and then just get our altitude, and see it, like I said, it's just, for me, flying helicopters is super fun, but I gotta say, back to 6G for me. You wanna know why? Because I just don't have the practice. And I'm gonna tell you something, guys. I've had LASIK Plus, I've had one touch up, and I'm telling you right now, I feel like I need some touch up. Which means I'm having trouble seeing the orientation of the aircraft. Now, it is, it is the middle of winter. We have thank, thankfully, thankfully reached the winter solstice. So our days are getting longer by the second. <laughs> and so truth is guys, if you're anything like me and you want a great helicopter, I'll give you a couple of really controlled lower passes to your camera crew. And I'm just gonna go ahead and land it right here at our feet. Just leaving it at the neutral stick position. I'm gonna go back to the normal and then see, it just, it's happened to fall down on its own, okay? That is a really good flight experience, folks. There's plenty of flight time. The thing does a great job in 3D. It does a great job getting back out of 3D despite my lack of skill. And I'm warm the whole time doing it, thanks to Kemimoto. So thanks, that was pretty cool. I didn't think much of this until I've now worn it. And I'm not even really cold. Granted, the sun is baking. It's really cold today. So it takes the edge off, which is nice. So you may see me wearing this thing in the future, guys. Uh, this being mine. And then the camera crew is actually wearing the one that was yeah, supposed to be for me. Yes. yes. This is a coat, more coat style. Yours is yep. more like the hooded sweatshirt style. And I've got the hooded sweatshirt, which is supposed to, it's actually an XL, that's a double XL. Yep. And I don't think the sizes were all that different, but I'm gonna tell you something, guys. If you wanna stay warm while you're flying your F280, this is a good way to do it. Now, let's talk. One more time, going through the startup sequence. Stick towards you on SB. That's gonna give you your throttle hold. Stick towards you is gonna give you your 6G. That is your auto leveling. If you have stick away, when you take off, it's gonna be allowed to drift and wander and flip over, okay? So just make sure that's towards your belly and towards your belly. When you're ready to take off, go ahead and move this back. And then you'll see it's gonna start spinning and spool up. Okay, and then all you have to do is just give it a little bit of stick input and it's gonna take off, okay? And guys, I'm not that great of a pilot, so watching this thing take off with such limited effort is pretty amazing. Also, I just wanna point out one thing too. Oh man, she's getting dead. Okay, so throttle hold again. I guess I'm gonna do throttle hold again. So the other thing too to keep in mind is at startup sequence, this may even warn you about that being in throttle hold when it's not. I don't know why that is. Spectrum does the same thing by default. It's very weird to me because if there were a safety feature, it's chiming, guys. I don't know if you can hear it. 
There it is, guys. So when you hear the chime, I'm just gonna carefully, I have my throttle hold on, it's been tested. I'm gonna just take this up. What a beautiful helicopter, guys, from Yu Zhang. Very impressive performance, very powerful. Let's do the thumbnail picture, guys. What a beautiful heli, and I hope you guys will get one for your own. All you have to do is look no further than the link in the video description below, and you can buy one. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this. One of my favorite features about this helicopter is the fact that it's easy to load and unload batteries. Yes, the transmitter did just say disconnected telemetry or lost telemetry or something like that. So in terms of all the different hardware on this thing, it's got all the things you want. It's got the quick removable boom with a three plug XT30 style plug. And basically it comes out of the box almost ready. You have to put these two bolts in and we're gonna of course show in the unbox build radio setup exactly what all you have to do. But make no mistake, as a ready to fly, I expect to be able to put alkaline batteries in a transmitter. Fortunately, I've got millions of different RCs, so I had a lithium ion 2S pack to put in the back of here. You could probably get away with a lithium polymer, it'd be fine, but it might just, just discharge a little bit quick. They actually call for 21700s, two of them. That is not included. I did not care for that, but we were able to use a battery from one of our cars. We'll go into that in the Unbox Build Radio setup. Also, my biggest gripe on this product, it's the same one I've had on every ready to fly with a fairly sophisticated transmitter. This thing has so many features that we are never gonna touch on this particular product, okay? You got Bluetooth connectivity. You have to insert the module into this plug underneath here. Very easy to get this off, it's right there. Mm -hmm. You've also got DSMX SLRT plug with the three pins, not SLR, not SRLT2 with four plugs, okay, four pins. So we'll talk about that in the Unbox Build Radio setup. So if you wanna use your NX10 or your IX20 or whatever it is you've got, you can do it, it's no problem. But you gotta get the right type of satellite receiver to integrate to this, okay? But at the end of the day, also has PPM, S bus on a regular servo plug if you want. But I'm gonna just say, this thing is action packed. It does what it says it's gonna do and it does a good job of it. I am not skilled enough to flip this thing around and do the TikToks and everything that it can do. But I'm gonna tell you this, it can do it. Just not this pilot, okay? That being said, my biggest complaint, and I'm gonna just point this out right now, is that when you have a sophisticated transmitter like this, and there is not clear, concise communication as to what it's actually going to do, it scares the crap out of me and it ought to scare the crap out of you as a beginner. That's why we're here, Brian Phillips RC here, to take one for the team in the living room cabinets. Living room cabinets, kitchen, kitchen cabinets. Yes. So that being said, I haven't crashed a helicopter into our cabinets lately, but I have done it. I would not want to crash this one into the yeah. cabinets. That would be a no-go, yeah. okay? Definitely not an indoor flyer, even though it's not huge. If you have a really big space and it's not yours and you don't have to pay to fix it, then maybe, but even <laughs> still, you better put on your safety glasses and nut cup because when this thing goes a crashing, it's gonna be shooting every direction. This is, make no mistake, an outside 6S platform. It is hobby grade, it is not toy grade. Some of the UJ stuff is toy grade on steroids. Very cool, RC type drone heli. This is not. This is a heli heli. It does heli things with heli speeds and heli power. So if you're a heli expert, you're gonna make this thing look like a Ferrari compared to the Ford Escort GT I just made it look like, okay? So that's no joke, guys. It's a really good product. I think you're gonna enjoy it. And I think you really will enjoy this product for what it is. Now, is this as good as the M4? It's considerably cheaper and simpler than the M4, but it's also a 6S platform. It's also considerably smaller than an M4. Is it as good as the recently reviewed 360, Fusion 360? I like both the M4 and the 360 better for what they are. But I'm gonna tell you this, if I had an NX10 in my hand and I had a satellite receiver plugged in, I think this might actually outperform the 360 by a fair amount. 
Definitely not the M4, but the M4, again, considerably more money and a lot more work. And a, yeah, exactly. A lot more work. Huge skill level. So, guys, the No BS Brian Phillips review is, does it do what it says it does? Absolutely. Is it a little scary when you have a transmitter that has a lot of features and you're like, oh my goodness, what do all these buttons that might do something that prevents me from getting hurt and we have no explanation anywhere in the Chinese manual? That makes me nervous. But the thing is the transmitter works fine. It's actually pretty good, okay? We show you all about that, the little bit we learned, but we don't know what that does. 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 We barely knows what this does. <laughs> these are trims. We do knows what those do. We do knows that these are trims. And yes, I did rip this stick out, which you can watch in our Unbox Build Radio setup. And yes, we will unbox uh, the Kemimoto warm gear in case you're curious how it comes out of the box. I got to say, in closing, Yu Zhang, good job as always. We haven't had a Yu Zhang that we aren't happy with. Admittedly, I am happy when things fly low standard so. well no what i'm saying is i don't have unbelievably high standards for helis because now i am not a heli snob if the thing flies and it's not hard to fly i love it yeah if the thing flies and it's got problems i will just exploit those problems like crazy the problem with this is that you don't know what the freaking transmitter does because i'm not going to learn a whole transmitter for one heli sorry i know there are people that say brian you could fly all of your planes with that Okay, fine. I'm not wasting my time to learn that because this doesn't have a monitor. I couldn't find a single place to figure out if my throttle was working or not. Okay. I'm sure there's a place. I just didn't find it. Secondly, no batteries and you can't use double A's. What the heck? Yeah. That was a big miss. Also, ready to fly. You better have a charger for that one there, guys. Three batteries came in this helicopter. Good value. I would definitely get manned aircraft. I would definitely get the extra batteries because they're inexpensive. 1300 milliamp, 6S, 40C, kind of a weird size class, but I don't care about that. I don't have a problem with 40Cs. I think they work fine in this helicopter. There's plenty of power. When it goes up like that, you can hear that tail rotor go nuts and it's hilarious. So biggest complaint with this is really what I chose. The ready to fly put me with a ready to fly transmitter that I wasn't crazy about. Interesting, right? So good old Brian made a choice and now he doesn't like it. No, I'm not gonna punish this awesome helicopter because I chose a ready to fly because I know a lot of you guys are gonna choose a ready to fly. So that's why we do it. Take one for the team. I don't want you guys crashing into your kitchen cabinets with a 6S heli, because you're never gonna have another heli, I promise. And it does come in a bind and fly configuration. So if you yeah. know, you're not uh, gonna Not bind and fly. Or yeah, it'd be a, like, it, it's be technically like plug and, plug fly, and fly. If you're yeah. using Spectrum. Right. Uh, which is what we usually promote. But the thing is, you may be able to use some other open TX or S bus right. or Futaba or whatever. But really, it, it's sort of like in between plug and fly. Like Camera Crew said, that would be about right. Yeah. It's not you, technically bind and fly. If you know you're not going to use that transmitter, you don't have to pay for that transmitter yes. and throw it on yes. the shelf. You can. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Good point. But, <clears throat> excuse me. But if you watch a lot of Brian Phillips RC and you're like, hey, I got an NX10 because of you. I want to use the NX10. How do I use the NX10? We'll show you the transmitter option or excuse me, the receiver option that we would suggest. And we just kind of point it out there. And then we have a link in the video description below to receivers. We'll probably in this case, go ahead and show a link to that one, to right? Those. Camera crew? Yeah, I can do that. Okay. So have we answered all your questions? We hope so. Does it do what it says? Yes, it does. Do we have some concerns? Absolutely. Always with powerful hollies. I get nervous and you should be nervous guys. You have to have a healthy fear and respect for the things that can actually hurt you. And let's be honest, foam planes, you have to kind of work to hurt yourself or you can get cut. But this thing, as with other 6S helis, has got enough juice to do some damage. So just be careful. Don't do anything you wouldn't do in front of your parents. Unless your parents also do these things. And then maybe think about their parents or whoever does it. And then call those people and say, get out here and fly with us. Because at the end of the day, what a sweet, amazing, immersive, 
scary at times, exciting, invigorating hobby that we have here right in front of our very eyes with things like this amazing helicopter from Yu Zhang. We hope you guys will get one from the links in the video description below. If you choose to buy one and you buy it from somewhere else, then basically it's like taking food off of my kids' plates and they're hungry. <laughs> I'm kidding, it's maybe not that bad. But seriously though, that's how we make money. That's how we get paid to do this stuff in the cold. Although today I feel like I'm in a furnace because I've got this warm coat on and it's actually quite warm and I'm surprised, it's really weird. I kept giving my wife crap about it. Like seriously, don't be such a... Pansy. Pansy, thank you for Different. clarifying that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, it's not that bad. We're only gonna be out there for like three minutes and then I'll talk for 30, 35. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, they are pretty nice. I've been here before. But I'm gonna tell you this guys, in the hobby, if you're not scared once in a while, you're doing it wrong. Meaning you gotta challenge yourself a little bit but you also have to be in, you know, fair to yourself and fair to the equipment, understanding that the, there's gonna be system limitations and there's gonna be system limitations. And the system limitation that you control is practice and perseverance, okay? Don't go out there starting with this heli, you will fail and you will fail in short order. You will fail and you will fail and probably break somebody else's stuff. So please be careful, don't start with something like this. It is not for the faint of heart, meaning if you're a brand new flyer, sure, you could probably take it off. You could probably even land it, but there's a better chance you're going to fail. So start with something a little easier. That's what we do on Brian Phillips RC. We help you get in the air from where you are right now. And it might be coming back from a hiatus and you got 30 years of experience and you're 10 times the pilot I'll ever dream to be. But the truth is we want to get you off the couch and into the air. That's so what we do best. So hopefully you guys will enjoy this video and we will just encourage you in the new year, 2024, if you're watching this in 2025, then that year or so on and so forth. Or anytime in the future. We wanna encourage you anytime in the future, just remember the beer truck is coming for somebody. Somebody watching this video might get hit by a beer truck and totaled tomorrow. So don't wait until tomorrow to start living today because you're not guaranteed tomorrow, but you are guaranteed this is a pretty awesome heli now that I've experienced it for us. Have I missed anything? If people don't want to buy a heli or they just got one for Christmas. That's right. But they still want to support us. You can go to Brian Phillips RC and check out all sorts of videos that we have filmed about different products that you might be interested in, mm -hmm. sorted by type or by brand affiliate that we work with, like in this case, RC Going or in other cases, Horizon or Fair RC or whatever it happens to be that day. We work with a lot of different brands, a lot of different sponsors, a lot of different, whatever, it doesn't matter. We just wanna bring you guys the best leaf blowers possible. I mean, helicopters and occasionally e-bikes because we know you love them too. Yep. But at the end of the day, we just really kind of love bringing you guys good stuff that's fun, that I'm into, and I think you're gonna be into it too because if you're a nerd like me, you're gonna enjoy stuff like this. Now, if you've already got, you know, 14 other helis, is this gonna be the right one for you? You're gonna have to make that decision. If you've got no other helis and all you've done is coaxial helis that you bought for 20 bucks from Walmart on sale at Christmas, this might be a bit of a bridge, but you might be able to do it if you have the right environment, okay? But at the end of the day, that is up to you and we're here to be a tool. Trust me, I'm called a tool all the time. <laughs> So we appreciate you being here and exercising my skills and abilities to be a tool. And so we hope you will come back and watch us do more tooling here on Brian Phillips RC. And if you want, <clears throat> you can stay tuned because we're gonna unbox this thing right now for your viewing pleasure. And if you guys have questions, try to leave them in the comments below. Also special thanks to our Patreons, especially the ones that have been around for years, mm -hmm. supporting us in that way. I called it a Patreon begging site. And to be honest with you, you guys have never made us feel like we're begging. And truth is, we don't really want to beg. We just wanna help grow the hobby and one or two bucks at a time, when you're buying these things, you buy these things from the links, you really support us great. If you just can't buy another one because your wife has threatened to murder you or leave you or both, then you know we understand Patreon is an option for you to save your life, so use that. <laughs> There's also PayPal if you wanna do one-time donations, but at the end of the day, why don't you just take that 30 or 50 or 60 or 100 bucks or $3,000? We get those all the time. <laughs> Just buy some awesome plane. I'll feel less bad. You'll have a new plane. It's going to be amazing, but you're going to have to work out the white thing on your own. I have my own problems to deal with. 
But then we also have YouTube members and we have YouTube super thanks if you don't wanna buy an amazing product and have this thing show up on your doorstep, which by the way, pretty easy build. And you'll be watching that next if you stay tuned. It's not a separate video because it's a heli. We usually roll those all into one. So hopefully we answer all your questions within that video. And we really do from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you for supporting us. We've had almost a decade in this. We got thousands of videos under our belt. And we really just love doing this, or at least I do, and my wife tolerates me doing it. So living the dream, I say it all the time when people say it and they're like, what do you mean, what nightmare? And I'm like, I don't know what you're living, but that's not what I'm living. So we want you guys to be living the dream too with us and not just watching us do it. So get out there and start flying some already. And if it's too cold, quit being such a pansy and buy one of these Kemi Moto coats so you can be warm and still be a pansy <laughs> while you're flying. <laughs> Okay, that's all you get. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. So much more from Brian Phillips RC. YouTube. Feels like it's been forever because for us it's been like four or five days. <laughs> We're going to open this right now. It's going to be amazing. Brian Phillips here with Brian Phillips RC. Megan, the wonderful camera crew on the camera end. And we're going to open this amazing, spectacular heli of some sort. I can tell it's a heli because there's a bunch of heli pictures on the side. <laughs> I know what this is, but only because I cheated. Yes. <clears throat> oh yeah, it's the F280. Now I don't know if I got a green one here or if I got a pink one, but they do come in pink, blue, and green. <clears throat> Looks like this one's green, okay. okay. So this one comes uh, from Yu Zhang. Y-X-Z-N-R-C. Yeah, it's my so favorite it just name. rolls right off the tongue. Yep, it's super easy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open it and see if it's any good. And I'm just gonna tell you right now, our experience with this particular brand has been good so far. As you can see, we've got one right there mm -hmm. and we have another right next to it. Pretty good. Now that one we got through a different brand, but it's the same basic helicopter. And we reviewed that as well. So really excited to see this. This will actually be one of the bigger ones we've done too. I think it might be the biggest heli we've done. So we're gonna find out really quick and it is a ready to fly the way we purchased it. And basically the way this works is you can get this with a TX-20, which is a jumper. So that's pretty cool. So I don't know what all that crap is, but it's a quick start manual. So basically, these two manuals come. We've seen that before in a few different helis. Now you can get these as a plug and fly as well, I believe. And so in our case, we got it as a ready to fly. So that means all we have to do is open it up, plug some things in and uh, let it rip, literally. Okay, so as you can see, very thick tail boom. Okay, and then this has a brushless motor. Looks like it's an 1806, 1800 kV with a surface mounted rotor, very strong tail blade. I don't know what material that's made of because it's painted. feels like it's probably carbon fiber. And then the tube feels to be plastic or polymer. I can't tell what it is, but then this, which would be like a three pin XT30, I believe that's going to take care of the wiring. So very easy, quick disassembly. Let's talk about batteries as we pull these out. Fully max 13 milliamp, 1300 milliamp hour, 40C. This is 6S 2200, okay? Excuse me, 6S 22.2 volts, 1300 milliamp. My apologies, guys, I misspoke there. Seems like a pretty small cable for a 40C pack, but you can see the individual cells here. And then the balance lead, which is nice. A little Velcro and looks pretty good. What else does it say? Low internal resistance cycle, LIFE, safety guarantee. This is LIFE, it's not LIPO. Yeah. I guess we'll have to see if that is LIFE. Yeah, this says LIFE safety guarantee. Huh, that's strange. I didn't think that would be a LIFE. I thought it was gonna be a LIPO. So lithium. No, 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 honey. Life cycle, long <coughs> life cycle safety guarantee. Because Is that what it says? Yeah, because it says LiPo up there. Okay, I was just gonna say, I, I thought like, these oh, were LiPos. That would weird. be like really weird. 
Um, okay, so then there's also this thing. Oh. I don't know what that is, but I would assume that's like a plug and fly module for DSM, possibly. Oh. Let's see what it is. It might be a programming module. So we'll have to read the manual a little bit on this. It looks like a some sort of a certificate for the transmitter. Ah, here we go. They have different labels that you can put on your radio system. It looks like this is probably a manual. I'm not sure this might go to the radio system and it might go to the heli. I'm not 100% certain yet. So that's Chinese, so this here would be English. Thank you for purchasing the Jumper AION RX Mini full duplex telemetry receiver. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So we'll deal with that. Binding procedure is unique. Okay, so we'll look at that if we need to. At this point, I'm not sure that we're gonna need to, so we'll just kind of lay this out of the way for the moment. Uh, but just understanding that there's some devices that come in this is why we do unboxes. Okay, we have some springs. Again, those are going to be for the transmitter. We have what appears to be a charging cable, a USB-A to USB-C. This would probably be for charging and for programming of the receiver. Because if I remember right on this particular receiver or on this particular type of heli, you sometimes have to unlock certain features with their software. Okay, so we have a bag that was wrapped around some things. Uh, it does come with a lanyard, which is nice. I do like lanyards. I am a lanyard flyer. I have lanyards on all of the transmitters that I use on a routine basis. Uh, let's see if it's big enough to actually work. Yeah, that's for a child's head. Works like a crown. That'll work perfectly. Does that look long enough? That's great. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, a, it's adjustable, honey. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be that adjustable. It's like a hairband. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Um, I don't know if it's adjustable enough, but we're going to find out. Yeah, there is some adjustment. I, I'm jokingly do that because, uh, we, we had a lot of lanyards that are not big enough for an adult to wear. Oh, there is quite a bit of adjustment. I take it back. So we show you these things because otherwise what good are we on Brian Phillips RC? We try to review this stuff so you can see the no BS hands down review of what these things are going to bring. Okay. So you have a spare tail rotor. Okay. Um, what looks like crappy Phillips screwdriver that happens to be broken. It's broken? Mm-hmm. Oh. I was going to say, it's like the crappiest Phillips screwdriver we've ever got. Yeah. We've gotten hundreds of we them. We have lots of them. So that's unusual. We don't usually see broken stuff, especially not a screwdriver. That would yeah. be a, a first thing. for us. So we're going to keep going in the unbox here. Oh, man, that looks nice. I always save the best for last, so we'll come back to that in a second. I can't wait to get that out. They do have this package sort of weird because the transmitter is upside down. Got the stick protectors. Man, those, those sticks are short. Like, they're down there. Uh, I can live with that. They feel pretty good. No spring return on that. Just spring return here, spring return here. You have some sort of a trim slider. Clicker. Very small screen. T20. Got a duplex antenna and a heat sink of sorts here. Um, looks like we have left slider and a right slider. There's, those are not momentary buttons. They push and stay. Push and stay. One, two, oh, a three position, two position. Three position, two position, lanyard mount, screw points i think those i don't know what those are are they buttons they are buttons they're navigation buttons oh, that's weird. weird okay never seen that and then a power button i don't think it's going to turn on because there's probably no batteries in here it does fit the hand okay uh, i feel like i can easily reach the inside which is important with helicopters I'm going to see if this, nope, that doesn't really unscrew. You'd have to undo the set screw in there, and then you could lengthen the sticks a little bit. They do have nice sharp posts, and you can catch the edge. You see how I'm catching the edge? Mm -hmm. I would never fly like that, but I'm not a pincer gripper, so I don't do this. I do thumbs, okay? 
So we'll see how that works. There's a little bit of a rubber pad here, which is nice. Good to hang on to a little bit of rubber here as well, but it's just kind of a, it's a different fit. Um, and then let's see how the lanyard adapts if it's gonna cause problems for everything else. Nice, small adapter. I do like that that's small because if they're heavy, they seem to damage the screens and block them. Let's see how this works. Still a little bit short, to be honest. I could probably make that a little bit longer. That's yeah, it. It's, it. It's manageable. Yeah. I could make that happen. That would be fine. But you do kind of block some of your own view with all this business here. So if I were to spend a little extra time, I could probably try to rearrange this a little bit, get these adjustable straps up on a different spot. Guys, getting your transmitter ready while you're unboxing a, a plane or a helicopter is a great idea. Don't mess around. Don't wait until you're out in the field. You're just going to be frustrated. All right, this is the money shot. This is what everybody's been waiting for, including me. Oh yes, that looks so sweet. So this is, it's got a battery in there too. I don't know if you noticed that. Oh, yeah, I see that. It looks really nice. Nice looking servos. Obviously digital servos, S0098DSS009A. I don't know what that means. And then it has a Yuzhang ESC 60 amp, five volts, eight amp, B, C, and it's four through six S LiPo power. It does have an XT60 receiver plug here that's screwed in, so that should be really easy to plug in and energize. So that's pretty sweet. You'll notice that you don't have to take the canopy off or the hood off, but you can if you want to, relatively easy. It looks like this has big grommets on it. Okay, and then there is a quick release to unscrew the tail boom adapter which is gonna purchase here. Okay, and then also the last thing in the package, and then we'll check underneath, is the blade set. Okay, so the main rotors. So I think I had made up in my mind that this was bigger than it actually is because this is not um, the biggest helicopter we've had. Hmm. I thought for some weird reason that this was bigger. Hmm. So very strange. But even still, it's got some size to it. Um, look like nice blades, got that cool look to them. Okay. And then just to give you an idea on size, what we'll do is we'll slide these in here in a minute, lay this stuff down. Let's check inside the box. Okay. So there's nothing else in there. So it looks like you're probably going to be able to potentially put this back in the box and you can just undo the boom. And then they've got room for three batteries and the transmitter. I did not see a charger. Is there not a charger? Oh. That is unusual. That is unusual because this is just a USB-C. So this didn't come with a charger, did it? I mean, that's not a huge issue for us because we do have a charger. And so we are going to set them up to charge right now. But let's look at how the batteries come out. I wonder if that was supposed to have a charger. I guess I don't know. I just know it said, choose how many batteries you wanted. Right. Which is the other thing too. Generally speaking, guys, now I can't always say this for every type of battery. These batteries are pretty standard 6S batteries. They're a little bit short. I don't do a lot of 6S 1300s, but I'm actually really glad I have these because we do have some applications that call for 6S. And 1300 is nice because I can pair those up and make a parallel connector a parallel adapter and then go ahead and run these as a 2600 which is nice or even a 3900 if i ran three of them in parallel okay so we have a strap here <clears throat> of course i don't have to build any of this which is really nice too so let's lay this off to the side pull this out and you can see that the velcro holds it in place really nicely on that carbon fiber mount so what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and leave this one on and we'll just charge it in the bracket which is a nice thing you can do when they give us these nice brackets. Now the only catch is when you've got a nice quick release bracket like that, but you've got three batteries, it doesn't do you as much good if you have to switch the batteries. So let's talk about charging. Now, as you guys noticed, we didn't get a charger with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and use one of my standard chargers and the standard chargers that we normally would use. I like using my S2200. This is where I would start if you're looking for something that's gonna give you 6S compatibility, smart compatibility. And then also the only catch is we have XT60s on here, so 
keep in mind you're probably going to need to get a fair amount of adapters throughout your career in RC. In my case, I've got a million adapters, so it's no big deal to go from XT60 to, in this case, an EC3, which is going to be compatible with an IC3. Okay, so we'll go ahead and plug this into the charger. If you don't know how to charge this, this already has 23.1 volts on it. Okay, now I'm going to plug in my balance lead. Now, this is not a smart battery, but it is at 3.84, which is really good for storage charge. So I'm going to go up. I'm going to change my speed. I'm going to scroll in. What is this, 1,300 milliamp hours? Mm -hmm. So I'll probably charge this at 1, 1 C. So that would be at 1.3 amps. And it's a LiPo. And we're charging, okay? So then we just go down to start. And it starts to charge. Sorry about the cat hairs, guys. So now, if you don't have one of those fancy adapters, of course, you can make your own adapters. And we have made a billion adapters over the years, not the least of which is something like this. I'm sure I built this one, um, which works really nice for all these non-smart batteries. Of course, as you know, my preference is to work with smart batteries. And the reason that we have been so excited to work with smart packs is because I cannot keep up with discharging so many batteries. And then, of course, the regular. See, that's at 3.2. That's a little bit. I mean, I could probably charge it there and not have a problem, but I'm just going to charge it at 1.8 or excuse me, 1.3, 1.3 amps. So 1.3 amps, divide that by a thousand or multiply by a thousand in this case to get you 1300 milliamp hours. Okay. So milliamp meaning one thousandth of an amp. And that speaks to the capacity of each of these cells. These cells are then put in series, which is why you have all these little balance leads. This balance leads are how we balance each of the cells. So like here's a cell, here's a cell right here. Those two wires are a cell. These two wires are a cell and so on and so forth all the way down the row until you get to the last cell. And then these cells, these are the first and last in are in series. So they're actually in parallel with the big discharge lead, okay? So if you were to take a multimeter, you would measure zero volts between here and here and probably close to zero ohms, maybe a, a couple of tenths of an ohm or something like that. Okay, there you go. Or, you know, very small, right? But then if you were to measure between each of these, you would see the voltage of each cell, okay? So you can also use a voltage alarm like this, which is super handy. If you don't already have one, I'm going to just cover up my alarm so it's not so annoying when I plug it in. And then this will tell you the nominal cell voltages and then each of the individual cells. Now I wouldn't make any bets on them. They're cheap. This thing also has a button right here, right there. You can press it and you can set that warning to wherever you want it to go off. Okay. I usually like to run them at about 3.3 unless I'm running an EDF jet. And then I like to have a little bit longer warning because the sag on EDFs is a little bit more extreme. Same can be true on helis, but a lot of these helis have circuits to help protect them from over discharge. Okay, so just keep in mind, here, here's another adapter we've made. So we're just gonna plug this in. Now, obviously the S155 won't work for this because that's only a 4S charger, but the S1200 will work. And so we'll use this other uh, choice to plug this in. Now, if you guys are brand new to the hobby or just returning to the hobby and you want to get into something cheap, my suggestion is don't get into something cheap on a charger. Get a high quality charger and buy one that's more than you need. Get a good double charger if you can and then just run with it. You'll use them for literally years. We have hundreds and hundreds of planes and helicopters alike and I use this charger almost all the time. Mm -hmm. It's just my go-to. And then years ago, I used even cheaper chargers and I used them with balance boards like this with all sorts of different adapters. I've got tons of different adapters I've made over the years because you never know what the next thing is gonna take and you will find out really quick. You need to know how to solder to do this hobby effectively or you're gonna spend a fortune on adapters. So if you don't know how to solder, start learning how to solder. It's pretty easy. Heat the surface, get it in there, use flux. Make sure it's not too hot, make sure it's not too cool. Don't burn yourself, don't breathe the fumes. You'll go crazy, literally, just like me. <laughs> so if you don't know how to solder, it's a skill you should learn. Okay, now we're gonna continue the build on the F280, okay? So this is gonna be pretty easy. Oh, look, the diversity antenna. That's pretty sweet. They get a little separator block in there. 
So as you can see, that thing, mm -hmm. pretty cool. And then here's our brushless motor. It's, it's kind of a different type of bell housing for a heli. And I'm thinking of, that thing has major strength to it. Good Lord, it's like three stacks high, it looks like. And uh, that's unusual because when we see these helis anymore on these fly barless systems, we've seen the propensity on the helicopters up to and including in these ones to have larger bell housings, like the bell housing on this M4 is all the way out here. And then on this, this is the older style of doing things on this blade. You can see it's got a thinner and then it's got a gear from an output shaft, okay? But just to give you an idea of the size class of this, it's a narrow body, which I like on a heli. And you can tell that the blades are gonna be quite a little bit smaller than what we have on both of those, okay? So I'll show you those side by side here in a minute too. Now keep in mind, there's a million ways to skin a cat. Not that we like to skin cats here because we do have cats. Yes. Okay, so we're gonna stick this in here. Should be a pretty easy build. Okay, it doesn't quite fit yet. So because it doesn't quite fit, I'm gonna unscrew this a little bit more and see if it opens up this tolerance. I'm gonna try to go in there. They've got the release taken care of for us. Just kind of pressing it in. Now you guys see, I'm gonna concentrate mostly on getting alignment of my connector and then I'm gonna press it the rest of the way, okay? Once it's all the way in, then I'm gonna take and put this thumb screw <clears throat> until I feel that it's totally secure. And when I say totally secure, I want it totally secure. Okay, mm -hmm. okay? so that's pretty good. I also see this thing here, which is interesting. I'm not sure what that's supposed to do. Looks like some sort of a diverter. What yeah, I was that? noticing that earlier. Does that release the battery tray? Oh, that's what releases the battery tray. Huh, I didn't even notice it. Hmm. That's sweet. This is a well-designed helicopter from what I can tell. Now, obviously, the proof is in the pudding. If the thing flies like crap, doesn't matter how well they designed it. Also, I just want to point out the fact that this tail rotor is got a lot of clearance between the ground and it, okay? So again, that's a little bit unusual from our experience. If we compare it to another helicopter, we crew well in a little bit. And then let's get these blades on here, okay? So we have the Yuzhang. So now how do you know which way they go? Well, if you put together a helicopter a few times, then usually it's pretty easy to tell. But I gotta say, this one is a little bit hard to tell because they're labeled on the top and the bottom. That's mm -hmm. unusual. So I am actually gonna look at the manual only because I don't want to get it wrong. I think I know which way it goes, just so you guys know, because I know there's somebody like, oh, you're such an idiot, and that's fine. I don't mind being an idiot. I think that's the way that's gonna go. So it's gonna go counterclockwise, okay? Now, if you look at the picture, really hard to tell with the backdrop, but I'm pretty sure they actually showed it going clockwise in that picture. So let's look. Here's the breakdown of how all this works. DSM2, DSMX, and then a Bluetooth module. Ah, that's what this is. This must be the Bluetooth module. How do you know, Brian? Because it's got four pins and this has four pins. Whereas the DSM2, DSMX module would be right next to it. Now, let's look at that real quick while we're talking about it. So if you wanna get in here, you can pop this off without pulling the tail boom off, which is nice. Oh yeah, I can see it right over there behind your... Goodness gracious. Am I supposed to pull those screws out? No. No. No, they're just pins. This is a very thick body. Like, it's not designed to come off of here very often. But look how thick this is. I love it. I wish they were always thick like this, because they do tend to break. Oh man, that is... Ooh, that is hard to do. Scratch my finger a little bit, too. Okay, so you can see now that that's off, I can actually... Just kind of lift this up and over, okay? So now we can look. I'm gonna move this crap out of the way for now. <clears throat> Looks pretty good. So as you can see, that's what we're looking at. DSMX, Bluetooth, we have LED1, LED2. So that's pretty good. Then of course we have the receiver, or excuse me, the uh, this is the ESC and BEC. So it's a hard case, which is a little bit unusual, but we do see that occasionally in helis. 
Wiring looks good. Everything is free from the moving parts so far from what I can see. And of course the output, this is a multi ESC because it's gonna be the tail rotor ESC as well. So that's pretty cool. Channel one, channel two, channel three, tail ESC, which is kind of weird that there is a tail ESC. And the reason there's a tail ESC is because this tail motor is controlled from the tail ESC. Does that say tail ESC? Yes, it does. But if you look at this, this says date, date port, tail, tail, tail motor, and then date port, like data port. Hmm. That's kind of weird. Cause yeah, where would that go? If there's no tail, that's a tail ESC. I'm trying to figure out where that enters. Is that entering on the data port? I bet that's the data port, isn't it? Yeah, cause the data port has four wires, but then where is the fourth wire? Is there a fourth wire? Yeah, that's the tail ESC. It's yellow on the top. That's right. And then it says main ESC. Ah, okay. I just figured it out, guys. This is called a data port because it is not only the ESC port, but it is also, which would of course run our main motor. And then this also with the yellow wire, it's signal only. Okay, then the ground and power are common with the red and black. And then the white is signal for main ESC, yellow is signal for the tail motor. Did you guys pick up on that? Because if you look at this, watch what happens when I unplug this. This goes to the main ESC, okay? The electronic speed controller. Man, they get those wires tight. I almost need to get my forceps to show this. See, there's only one wire there. That is the yellow wire. And then this is the white, red, and black. But as you know, we don't need to provide power back to the ESC. Firstly, because it's powering itself from the battery via the BEC that's built in. And then it's back feeding the electrical juice necessary to run this. So that's kind of cool to understand how these things work. I'm also kind of a nerd, you may have noticed. All right, so we're gonna take out the hardware here for mounting the rotor. Looks pretty basic, but we always like to get this stuff right. Admittedly, I am less of an expert when it comes to helis than I am with airplanes. I do like airplanes and I do like helicopters a lot, but I have a lot more expertise in the airplanes. So when I do a helicopter, I am the first to admit that there are certain gaps in my knowledge. And so I don't wanna mislead and I don't wanna guide you in the wrong direction, <clears throat> but I do want to fly them, okay? So now that we have assumed the information we needed to assume from opening this, let's take a quick look at the way things are laid out here, okay? So the camera crew has just stepped directly in her light, so she's gonna go back right where she was there. Oh, this is a 4314 250 kV motor, okay? That is a direct drive. You can see there's lots of lube on that shaft. That's always good, you know, if you don't get the lube. Oh, wow, those servos are strong. Holy cow, I can barely turn those. That is cool. And then obviously this thing we talked about just being really robust and solid. That's cool. It does seem like this helicopter should be able to support a bigger battery given its power. And I'm also a little bit weirded out. I thought this thing was bigger than it is. These are not very big. So that's both good and bad. 6S, this thing is gonna scream. Can you imagine? Yeah. Cause like the Those... M4 is considerably bigger. Yeah. And it's 6S as well. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like this thing's gonna be nuts. So I'm sure it's gonna fly great. Yu Zhang does a good job. Um, X, Z, Y, Q, R, C, W, X, whatever. Elemental P. Elemental P, R, C. That's a hilarious joke, guys. Relax. Those of you that have not memorized the reverse alphabet, I'm sure there's probably some like super obvious explanation we haven't figured out yet. Um, so we'll just be no, making butts not. of ourselves like usual. <clears throat> okay, so this is the app download. If you guys pause your screen, you can download the app. There is an app that you can use to make some adjustments on this heli, okay? The application is an important thing if you want to make adjustments, okay? 
You don't have to necessarily make adjustments, but the reason we show you this is because like for me, I use Android. So I'm gonna be looking at Android. We're gonna lift that so you don't have a glare. And then all you have to do is pause and go ahead and do your thing. So these are the settings. We'll just show you, okay? So you can see kind of how this works and look, it's got a live voltage telemetry. That's pretty sweet. Now I'm just gonna say this from my personal experience, really bad exploded view diagrams, not very much precision. Um, this is a really nice manual, but they fit, like this is really easy to see and beautiful and detailed, but then you get to the exploded view diagrams, weak. I mean, you can tell what you're looking at, but I just feel like, wow, they should have done a better job on this because this is a really nice product, okay? So other than that, so far I've been really impressed with everything. Can you tell how to put the blades on though from that picture? Can yes, that I can. Confirm? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. That's a good point. Okay, so remember how I said counterclockwise? I was wrong, okay? Now, are these ambidextrous? I always say that wrong. You said it right. Are they equa, equa sized? <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> they, they are, I, I believe. So this, oh man, they forgot the hole. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. Like, why are we watching this idiot? Okay, so that's the way that's gonna go. And then that's the way that's gonna go based on the drawing here on the exploded view diagram. Well, I mean, maybe we should go to the one that's not exploded. That's just all I did. <laughs> the collapsed, the <laughs> collapsed view diagram. Oh, good. So they actually do have a pretty good detail here with the parts. That's nice. That's pretty cool. Okay, and then the Chinese, that's really, that's really what we were looking for. So if you're, if, if you're intimidated by this manual, just remember half of it is literally in Chinese, okay? Yep. Now, if you only get the Chinese manual, which has happened to us before, then just like whip out your phone, open up Google, type the word translate, and if you have a camera on the phone, there's a good chance you're gonna have a camera button, press it, and then you can literally read this live. If you've never seen how to do that, it is pretty freaking cool. It's cooler than anything else in this video, except for the awesome <laughs> helicopter. Which by the way, if you guys wanna help support Brian Phillips RC, as always, the best way you can do it is watch a video, smash the like button, click the bell for notifications when subscribing, and then if you decide to buy something because you think it looks good based on our review, or if it looks good in spite of our review, yeah. then follow down below in the video description below. You'll see links. When you follow those links and you buy these things, you help support us financially. It really does add up. It's small amounts from you and your buddy and 40 other people that did it. And that's really how we make any money on this channel, okay? So the rest of it comes from ad revenue, which is annoying for everybody. Yes. Including us. But you're choosing to be annoyed by watching this video. <laughs> okay, so you see this? That little collar goes down like that when it's done. Okay. Let's slide this in. This is gonna be complicated stuff, wow. Now, I'm gonna put my nuts in my fingers. Don't drop your nuts. You guys see that's a nylock, so make sure that you have threads going through the nylon, okay? So now, because I don't wanna chase my nuts, these nuts, there's two of them, I am going to put my hands on the nuts and I start turning it, okay? Once I got it tight-ish, I am gonna not forget to tighten that because the camera crew is not gonna let me forget. Right. She has committed to not letting me forget. I'm okay. looking at you, camera crew. I see you. I'm okay. looking at what you're doing. All right, so then I'm gonna hold these nuts again. Would you mind holding these nuts? Oh, it looks like you're doing pretty good on your own. <sighs> Dang it. Okay. Yeah, starting out the year right. Guys, if you're brand new to Brian Phillips RC, we've been doing this for almost a decade, that's right. We've been doing this for a lot longer than a decade because we're old. Right. But we've been doing reviews for almost a decade. Hey, you, we should try the shovel and see if it works. <laughs> inside joke, guys. We won't continue with the inside jokes anymore today. Uh, we'll come back to those later. I'm gonna use a crescent wrench. That's right, a that crescent wrench. Not a crescent wrench. Do we have any butter knives? Just kidding, that's an old joke. That's an old joke. You guys would have to be long timers to get that. Yeah. Okay, watch this. And you're, you're probably thinking to yourself, Brian, that's the wrong tool for the job. You know what, sorry, this is a crescent wrench. 
also known as this is not Crescent. I would say that is not this, this is a sizable wrench. <laughs> That's my metric, sizable wrench. Right. Okay, so I tightened it down to where it's tight. Too tight. Now I'm going to show you what too tight looks like. Yeah, that's too tight. When this thing hits my leg, I don't want it to chop it off. I'm just kidding, guys. It's not going to hit my leg. <laughs> not funny. The camera crew loves it when I make jokes about getting hit by helicopters because it's like the one thing that concerns her. Yes. <laughs> and to be honest, it's probably one of the things that would be concernable about what we do. All right. Yeah, still too tight. I went way Jeez. too tight. I'm sorry. What do you I think you're doing. Over I don't there? know my own strength. Putting I'm furniture sorry. together. Yeah, I was gonna use an impact, and then I decided. Okay, so there, there it is. So I found the sweet spot, the sweet spot where it will move, but it's not like really hard to move. So super, super specific measure. Right. Oh, you almost lost your nuts on that one. Listen, I had my nuts held by my croissant wrench. <laughs> Sounds delicious. It does. Oh, crap. No, that's what I said. Your nut's coming off. Well, geez, I tried to cross-thread it. I hope it's not all screwed up. If it is, RTL fasteners will have to come to save the day. I did. I promise that's not a plug for RTL fasteners. I might have just screwed up my threads. If I did that, that would be so embarrassing. Dang it. Um, I'm just going to hold this here, and I'm going to back. I'm going to put it on backward. Kind of an awkward build for, uh, I mean, for being the only one of two nuts you have to install. If I manage to screw this up. You screwed up half the build. I screwed up 50% of the helicopter build. <laughs> it's, it's like, uh, if you want to work with Brian Phillips RC, just remember. No, I think we're good. I think we're good. By the way, RTL fasteners is nice and we have like a coupon code or something. So yeah. if you're ever wanting to buy supplies that you see us use like a plane stand or glue or something like that, all you have to do is go to brianphillipsrc.com. That's our website. And, uh, if they ever block our links, which they were trying to do to us earlier this year, which thank God, I, I have to report that, that Google has finally sort of responded and come to terms that like, hey, you weren't breaking our ambiguous policy that really said nothing about what we were doing, which is having a lot of links. Um, they said excessive. Excessive. But I, I don't know There's how no you define for excessive. what excessive is. You know, it's like you have a limit of characters, but we were never over the limit because you, they, can't, you be. can't do it. Okay. Like usually when a company has policies, the policies are like pretty explicit so that you can obey the policy. Like don't go over the speed limit. And so obviously I drive the speed limit everywhere. But they tell you what the speed limit is. Yes. True. You obviously you, don't work for Google. I don't. No. Okay. So you see this? It's about equal. I don't want them so loose that they're flopping around all over themselves. You got to remember there's going to be a lot of centripetal force. And I am a little bit surprised that it's spinning that way. And I'm going to seem like an idiot now because now I'm going to go take this over and compare it to another heli, okay? By the way, if you guys are just drooling over this, con look at this holder. This That's thing, you amazing. can't even buy that from the links in the video description below. You can buy the screwdrivers. If you buy a couple e-bikes though, you can <clears> get You buy an e-bike, it comes. You can make your own garbage Some Some assembly too. required. Okay, guys, here it is. All right, so you're also probably watching this and thinking, um, okay, get to the point, Brian. We want to see this thing fly. Well, you're watching the wrong video or you forgot to watch the beginning because we always put that at the beginning. Yeah. Okay, so as you can see, the Fusion 360 is bigger than this. So this is like 280 millimeters, okay? But the body of it is about the size of the Fusion 360. But good Lord, this flies on 6S. I know, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Did you buy me a hard hat for Christmas? <laughs> Success. It's going to be like... <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not that good of a pilot. I was going to say, did you bring another pilot? <laughs> so one thing I've learned about RC is that everybody has a skill level. And one of the things that we try to do on Brian Volt's RC, um, besides, you know, point out problems that the manufacturers made, um, is I like to admit when I don't have skills in certain arenas. And I'm going to tell you this right now. While I do know how to fly a helicopter, I fly with auto leveling, I fly with stabilizers, I fly with flight controllers, and I could probably fly a helicopter up and go like this and then turn around and maybe land without a stabilizer on a good day. But anymore, like with this amazing one or that one or this one, and these are Yu Zhang, so I should probably point at these, mm -hmm. or this awesome one, the M MD500. 
they practically fly themselves. But I want the ability to turn that off so I can also fly it. And if I want to flip it over or do something, and I'm not just talking about a gimmick where you press a button and it flips over because that is a fun toy. And yes, it is really cool um, because I believe you can do that with that Coast Guard heli. And I believe you can do it with the olive drab version that Yu Zhang also makes. We just happened to not review that one mm -hmm. um, from Yu Zhang. We reviewed it from another competitive manufacturer. But at the end of the day, I want to be able to fly these things with the skill required to fly them. In addition to, hey, I'm a brand new pilot, but I would like to be able to like see what this is all about. Okay. Now, do you, do you want this heli as a brand new pilot? I'm going to tell you this right now. My guess is this thing will scare you out of piloting helis. Yeah. And there's another thing you need to know about helicopters that you may not already be aware if you are brand new to RC. And that is that helicopters go from perfect to garbage in about one second. Yeah. Airplanes rarely go from perfect to garbage in one second, but you can if you hit a chain link fence at full speed. There's just a lot of steps between full speed and not full speed on an airplane, whereas most of the moving parts and the components that are precision dialed, tuned in, and really have to work together perfectly, there's just not much room for wiggling. Right. There's no foam casing around all of those important parts. That's right. And so the reason we bring this to your attention is not only from the concept of we want to help you guys make good decisions with your dollars and cents because that's what you have come to expect on Brian Phillips RC. We're going to show you what these helicopters can do based on my level of experience through my sphere of expertise, which is not very big, mm -hmm. but also is it really going to fit what I can do? Cause you can always put yourself up against me and say, Hey, you know, like I'm a better pilot than Brian. I should be able to handle that. No problem. Let's see how he does. Or I'm like brand new. I'm not as good a pilot as Brian but I'm getting there and you'll probably beat me because the thing is, if you fly a lot of helicopters, you can easily catch up to me and surpass me in a couple of seasons. Now, the other thing is looking at this windsock, we have windsocks throughout our property for a variety of reasons. I see a lot of movement of airs. Yes. And those molecules are moving quickly. That's one advantage to a helicopter that you're not going to have with an airplane and that is you can take off and fly a helicopter in higher wind conditions provided they're capable now this is a 6s helicopter that's a lot of s's that means it's six cells in series you're at like 22.2 volts nominally that's a lot of voltage for a heli that that 360 over there which is only just incrementally bigger than this i believe that flies on 3s or 4s right i think okay. it's 4s i know the m4 is 6s this one's 6S, yes. Yep. Now you also notice the dust because it's like in the middle of winter for us. And so my apologies for being so rude and showing dust on helis. But the truth is, I love flying, but even Brian has to sometimes wait when it gets cold. But I have an answer for that, so stay tuned. <laughs> stay tuned. So keep staying tuned. We're gonna do that at the end. So this uh, USB A to C, uh, I believe you can also plug that in and do your updates on the receiver. And I'm just trying to verify that. I don't remember seeing that actually. No. So I'm wondering if that means that that is for this. Yeah. There's a USB-C right there. Oh, nice. Okay. So there's also a headphone jack there too, I think. So I'm not sure what all we're going to have to do to make this work but I am under the impression that this probably needs batteries. Oh my goodness, I can't get that thing to pop off. There it goes. Oh, good. Okay, so you can use um, a couple of batteries. What does this use? 21, 21, 700 times two? What the frick? What is that? So you can buy the batteries to fit in here, or you can, you can just put in a 2S, I believe. Because look, it's got a 2S Hextronics balance lead. <sighs> I might need to look into that and we'll come right back. Okay, so we've been confused a couple of times on this build. One, I thought this thing was bigger, which the size I was looking at was the overall length of the helicopter when I picked this helicopter. So fortunately for me, I've got hundreds of items to make me happy. 
And uh, I wasn't expecting it to come out of the box like this, except I was. Don't be like me. Secondly, ready to fly, not including transmitter batteries is not unusual, except when they require a specialized rechargeable battery, which is a 21700. That is a essentially 1S battery, and there's two of them in series. Now, how do I know this? Because they used a Hextronics balance, um, balance plug, okay? So that's common to batteries like this that happens to work for one of our RC cars which has a T or Dean style connector and then a standard Hextronics 2S connector. This happens to be 2000 milliamp hours, 15C should be fine for what we're doing. But I got to thinking I need to verify that this is in series and not parallel. So how would you tell the difference between parallel and series? If they were in parallel, then the positives would be connected together and the negatives would be connected together and then they would go out and then they would be connected together on the transmitter. Thusly, you would have a bigger 1S pack. Whether it is lithium ion or lithium polymer, it doesn't really change anything in terms of the nominal voltage, but it does change the way that it charges. Since this is a built-in charging circuit via the USB plug, we need to be a little bit careful about using the wrong type of battery, which is why I don't mind using this in place of two 21700s, which are kind of expensive to get, if you ask me, for one-off projects like this will be for us. Now, if you're gonna use this jumper for all your transmitter needs, then it would totally make sense to go ahead and get those proper batteries. They are big, they're like 5,000 milliamp hours per cell, which is a lot. I thought that was kind of crazy. Um, and then they will discharge over a period of time. Just be careful about your polarity because the polarity is a little bit more ambiguous with this type of plug. You have to look, it says plus, it says minus, and then it says minus and it says plus. Now that would tell you right there that this is in series because one of your negatives is attached to one of your positives. And then the negative and positive over here are separate, okay? But it's a little bit hard to chase the wires. And so I just took my multimeter out, world's crappiest multimeter, this is like one of the free ones you get from Harbor Freight because I want it in my drawer <laughs> instead of having to go get one of three others that I have in the house or five. So I put it in ohms, okay? You also notice it has a broken tip. I touch those together and it goes to zero ohms or close to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna verify the polarity from plus to negative. Obviously it's opened. Obviously they're together. Now you can confirm that by just looking at the piece of steel. And then I'm gonna confirm that we aren't touching here, okay? We're not touching here. Pretty obvious stuff, okay? Not exactly electrical engineer level stuff. But what I don't know is the pinout. So I'm gonna hold the middle one. And now this is gonna tell me if they are going in series because I'm gonna actually use my broken lead here. And then I'm gonna to touch the middle one. Watch this, I'm holding this right here. And then I'm gonna to touch this. Oh, yep, that's definitely closed. Do you see how it changed to an I for infinity? Excuse me. And then it goes to zero when we have a closure. Now I'm gonna to go to the other pin just to confirm this. Yep, still opened, closed, and opened. Now I can go and confirm here. Yep, close, open, open. And then here, close, open, open. Now why do we want to do that? because if you're unsure of yourself, better to be safe than sorry. Now, the other thing you can do is you could take uh, and purchase two 21700s and put them in here and you'd be fine, okay? I'm not gonna do that because I'm way too lazy. Also, now that we have this, I wanna talk about these stupid battery savers. I hate these things, they are garbage. If you like them, I'm not trying to insult you, but I hate them. So I am taking mine off right now. This is how you break your leads on your multimeter, <laughs> in case you were wondering, uh, by prying things like this instead of going uh, 14 steps over to where the tools are. But I hate these things, they get in the way, they make a battery twice as big as they need to be in all the wrong places. And then you can always save that for another project. I know, Aww. I know, I know, it's like a Christmas present. Thank you. So now you can see a lot better. 
Now, if in doubt, you could also ohm this out, but it'd be a little bit harder because you would be working with five wires, okay? <clears throat> or you could just trust me and you don't have to ever trust me. I don't generally ask you to trust me on stuff. I ask you to see what I've learned and then you can make your own decision. In this case, I'm gonna plug this in right now. And then when smoke flies, you'll understand what's going on, okay? okay so that fits in there. It's a nice fit. This happens to come with one of the trucks that we reviewed not too long ago. And then we'll just slide this on there. And then we'll show you what happens. Now it's gonna turn on. You have to wait for a second. Welcome to Edge TX. Wow, okay. that's pretty sweet. Okay, so Edge TX is gonna talk to us. Goes to a green light. Now we can put away the multimeter and then we have another thing to keep into perpetuity right. forever so that my wife is happy. Because <laughs> she, she would not be happy if we didn't keep things. If we couldn't keep Into it. perpetuity. Yes. Now earlier I said to hold tight because we were gonna talk about some things. Now we're still gonna talk about those things. But I just wanted to at least show you how we were gonna accomplish our goals there. Now I wanna ad adjust one other thing. I'm gonna show you exactly how I'm gonna do it. And while I'm over here by my charger, I'll grab one of the batteries for the heli and I'm gonna turn off one of the chargers, okay? I have a stupid question before we get off of this. You can still recharge the battery that you put in there via the USB-C cable, right? The reason that you should be able to is because there is only one lead plugged in. Okay. Okay. So the wire that's plugged in to this thing is exactly the same way that it's wired in a 2S battery. battery. Now, if it was a 1S battery that had two cells, also known as a, um, they have another way of marking them. It's like 1P, 2C or something like that. It's been a while since I've seen one, so I don't want to say it wrong. This is exactly the same output if you had two 2170s or 21,700s as using a 2S lithium mm -hmm. ion, okay? So this would charge exactly the same way. Okay. So yes, you can charge this. Um, so good question, camera crew. I'm glad you asked. All right, so now this is the battery that's gonna energize the helicopter. I don't wanna energize the helicopter yet because I'm not in a place where I'm safe to do so. I'm gonna grab this thing. Nope, too big. I need to go down to 1.5 millimeters probably. I wanna show you guys how to adjust the thumbs on this heli. And I like that the transmitter is rechargeable. It's just- Okay, so holding this, I'm gonna unscrew. And then I'm gonna see if I can unscrew these to make them longer. Oh. How high can I go? And then I'm gonna just torque it down and see if that does it. Oh yeah. See, then I can get a longer lever arm, which is more consistent with what I'm used to, okay? So see what I'm doing, folks? Unscrew the set screw. That allows me to back this off, except it feels like it's unscrewing the bottom, which I don't want it to do. Hmm, it's going. I just hope it's not unscrewing the shaft from the bottom, and it might be. It feels like that's what it's doing. It doesn't look like it's getting taller like the other one did. That's, yeah, and that's probably because I tried to start unscrewing it before I ended this the first time. See what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take this off. That's a set screw. See the set screw? Okay. Look inside this hole with me. Yeah, see it's spinning the shaft. So the only way for me to fix that now is to figure out a way to hang on to the shaft in another way. And I'm honestly, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go fast. Yep, got it. See how it's going fast? See how it's unscrewing from the bottom? Mm -hmm. That's not so good, okay? You see what I've done? I see that, but what have you done? I what unscrewed mean? the actual shaft. Instead of just pulling it out? <clears throat> ding, ding, ding. Okay. So I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do to, to fix my screw up, okay? First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a pair of pliers. This is the first and only time I've ever done this, by the way, folks. I'm gonna grab onto the shaft down here, okay? With these Lyman pliers, I'm gonna hold tight. And then I'm gonna unscrew this a little bit. And I'll show you since I've got this. Yeah, you can make those really long, okay? I'm gonna put that back where I want it while I'm doing this. I'm gonna drop the set screw back in. Okay. Might as well learn while you can. Give me a... 
Hold that so it doesn't spin. Yeah, hold my shaft. Oh, it's kind of pokey. Yeah, I know. Okay, so I'm gonna just tighten this and that should expand. Okay, we'll go. See, now that doesn't spin. But guess what I get to do now? Now you have to screw that back on to that there. That is not gonna screw back on. That is a manufacturing, slip it in there and hope to God that it stays. Sort oh, of thing. really? See, yep, serious law. But you know what guys, let's be real. That thing ain't coming out. I don't think your shafts are the same length. Do you have a problem with my length and my shaft? You help me make it longer then. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we'll unscrew that. Is that pretty close? Yeah, that looks better, actually. Should obviously want some longer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Consistency. See, for me, that feels more like what I'm used to, okay? For you, you might want them to be shorter and you might want them to be longer. In fact, I met one of the best pilots I've ever met in my life, and I met a lot of good pilots in my life. And uh, he's flown millions of flights and he liked to have his sticks short. Hmm. So anyway, all right, so that's done. Okay. That, that is not the first or only time we've ever fixed a broken transmitter, although that was barely broken and I did it. So I don't wanna poo poo the product because I made a mistake. Just remember, loosen the screw first, then make your adjustment, you'll be golden. Also, I could pull this out, put a drip of CA and that thing would never come out again until I intentionally wanted to break it, okay? Which might happen quick, depending on how this heli flight goes. <laughs> Okay, Great. all right, so now that we have done that, we can take a look at some of the features of this device. And yes, why don't we go ahead and show charging real quick, just so you can see it doesn't catch on fire. Or if it does. Or if it does, it'll make for a good video. All right, so let's go ahead and turn this off by pressing the button. Now it's a black and white screen, it's very small, it's got a little 33 that comes up. Good audio event too, by the way, I must yeah. say. Sounded very good for being what I would consider to be, okay. So we're just going to the charger here. This is just a run of the mill charger. This one puts out uh, 5.2 volts at 1.35 amps, a little bit more than average. USB-C, lights come on to let you know it's charging and it does prevent you from turning it on, okay? There's some knobs here, which is kind of nice. I like the sliders, that's, that's pretty cool. Although I think it would be hard to remember. There is like a locking position at the bottom and the top. Seems Something like they'd be easy to bump. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, all right, so now okay. that we know that that works and we haven't caught on fire yet, okay. Yeah. So we'll unplug. It is nice that it comes with a USB-A to USB-C cable. Seems to be reasonably high quality. It's not especially short. These are the types of things that you can't find out from the manual because they're not gonna generally tell you that stuff. But I am very disappointed it did not come with a transmitter battery. That seems to me somewhat of an unforgivable sin because this is supposed to be a ready to fly. So really what you're getting is you're getting a more ready to fly helicopter. And what also concerns me when we see a helicopter that is ready to fly that doesn't come with things like batteries. Batteries are not the problem, by the way, because many times you have to put your own AA batteries right. in. But there was also no charger for the batteries that go in the heli. So mm -hmm. I'm like, wait a second, what's going on? So now what I'm thinking about at this moment is, would it make sense, given the circumstances of our weather, for us to go ahead and fly this outside? Obviously, yes. Well, not inside. But would sure. it make sense for us to take off the blades for our testing and then we could go outside after we're done? Because it, I mean, I did play with my nuts and I dropped them. You remember that? Yeah. That was awkward. So we'll pause and come right back. Okay, so we've got the transmitter running, we've got the sticks in, and we have a freshly charged battery. The one I was using was not fully charged. Okay, so this one's fully charged. And as you can see, it says 8.3 volts here. Okay, so that's gonna tell you your screen. Uh, it's gonna tell you, it uh, looks like it's got a time. Center. Those are your trims. Center. Okay, Center. so those are the trims. These are buttons that do things. Click. 
menu. Okay, here we go. Express, LRS, wizard loader, okay. Firmware, logs, models, model, 100, Y, M, L, read me, okay. So, I'm just scrolling through. What time is it, actually? It's 1. Let's set the time, because I'm kind of curious about this. 13, 17, and 45 seconds. Um, it is not the year 2000. It's year 2023, and it is January. No, it's not. It's December. Oh, you got to scroll it up. 12, and then what is the date? Like 29? 29. So there's your time, battery range, no key, volume, all the way up, beep all the way up, whoa, beep the length, Ooh. beep pitch, wave volume, pretty cool, mm, brightness, all the way up, all the way down. Okay, so that's pretty cool. And then I'm just gonna, ooh, look at that. That's pretty cool, trainer. I'm just gonna hit back. There's a back button, there's left, right, and then there's menu. That's the F280, okay? So I'm just gonna go back. And I'm assuming that at some point there's gonna be a switch. I'm trying to find a monitor mode. See how there's like buttons? I don't know what the heck those things do. I don't know what this does. I don't know what this does. I don't know what these do. They're kind of hard to get to for me. We've got switches here. We've got buttons here. So we're gonna have to look and see what they've set up by default so I don't, oh, it's right here. Look, right here. Throttle hold switch. So which way is throttle held? That way or that way? Okay, switch down is 3D mode, switch up is 6G mode. Okay, so that'd be 6G is what we want. Okay, switch up is normal mode, and then throttle one, throttle two, okay? So this would be normal and auto leveling. This would go into 3D, and then you could do these two modes. Now, I don't like the position that switch is in, but I think I'll get used to it. You can actually loosen this and you can turn that if you want. But I guess that's about right. Okay, so the biggest thing is throttle hold. So this is switch down, unlock, switch up, unlock. No, yeah, what is... What does that mean? I'm not sure what that means. Maybe that means auto leveling. And not only that, but there's up and down. So then throttle hold switch. Oh, that's not supposed to be there. That's supposed to be pertaining to this, I bet. Unlock, switch up is lock. <laughs> so which one is it? I don't know. That's one of the disadvantages of the Chinese companies. This has been a pretty good manual so far, but I still don't know if I wanna risk it in here because even if you try to hold a helicopter, this helicopter 6S is gonna be powerful. So the good news is I can load the battery without plugging it in. So you just load it in that tray slide. Okay, and then we know this red thing now, snaps. Oh, that is super nice actually, yeah. really easy to use. You can lift this and it allows you to take the battery out really easy, okay? You don't even have to do much of anything. So like if you're trying to pull the battery out, you can start pulling and then you can release it really That's easy. That's pretty nice. That is really, really nice. Okay, so without further ado guys, we're getting ready to go outside. I don't even know if we have the blades rotating the right direction. I don't want to even think about reading this because that's so much information I don't care about. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hope that they have this set up good enough to get the job done. And then if it's not, we'll know that there is some fine tuning that can be accomplished using this apparatus plugged in right there where it says Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. Okay and using the app on your smartphone. Okay, so I'm assuming you have a smartphone. If you don't have a smartphone, they have Google, Android, and then do they have Apple as well? Yes, there are So three there's options. all three. So that means that technically, 
most smartphone carriers or smart tablets should be able to get you taken care of. So we hope we've answered all your questions about this. If not, we'll answer some of them during the flight, which is at the beginning. Uh, obviously, we have one other thing because it's really cold out. And so my wife has a big pansy. <laughs> and so we're gonna open this right now. This is for her and her only. I love being uncomfortable and miserable in the cold. There's one for you. <clears throat> And so this came from Kemimoto. Kemimoto. They thought I looked miserable, so. They watched us filming at 14 below and yeah. they're like, hey. That's terrible. That's Why terrible. Would that? Why would you make your camera crew live with that? And I would say, because we have coats, we live in Iowa, it gets cold. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this and see if it's anything more than just a bunch of hype because my camera crew is very excited to do it. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna wear them, hopefully, because it doesn't look that cold, but it is quite cold right now. Cold. And it's windy, so it's gonna be worse today. And I don't know if we're gonna have to charge these, and I'm, they taped it all together. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open it the easy way. Okay. Like this. Perfect. That's how you open it. Yes. Okay, so what do we have here? We have electrified socks. Okay, I will definitely not be wearing theirs, but the camera crew might be. I definitely will. As you can see, there's a pocket for your battery to go into, okay? And then it comes with what appears to be some sort of- um, It's a remote. Battery remote, mm -hmm. USB A to C with a splitter on it, and then a really heavy duty keychain, and then a couple of batteries. Let's see what type of batteries we've got. Okay, so it looks like a battery. Looks pretty simple, it says low, medium, high. And then it's got 25, 50, 75, 100 smart control. Okay, so there is a user's guide. We're probably not gonna get into the user's guide, but we will show you how to charge these real quick. Now, these are just the socks. We also have a vest and a small coat, if I remember right. Okay, so it comes with the three volt uh, CR2032. And that is to go into your controller. But it looks like this already has a battery, so that's just a spare. And then they come with this nice keychain, key ring thing. So you can slide this onto your key ring and you can run your socks with it. Perfect. Okay, so for those of you that actually work in the cold and have miserable existence like me, during my normal day job, I do have to work out in the cold and I just put more stuff on usually. This might be really nice, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. So I'm gonna plug in my own USB adapter, and then I'm gonna use the provided cable, which is USB-A to USB-C, and then I'm gonna plug in the charger, okay? So as you can see, there is a plug here, and I don't know if it's doing anything. It's kind of hard to tell. Yeah, okay. Okay, so that's that. Looks pretty straightforward. Now, when one of these is ready, you can unplug it. Oh, I didn't have it plugged all the way in. See how there's a light on now? Look, you have to really snap that in. Oh. There's a green light, green light's charging. Okay, so while those charge, there is a user's manual camera crew if you wanna just peruse that I'll real quick. I'll read that at my own leisure. No, just show them inside because I'm gonna throw this stuff away. These are washable also, but obviously Without the you battery. wouldn't take the battery packs out. And they have another option that has an app too, I believe. But I figured if I have the remote in my pocket, I can adjust that as I need to while we're filming because I'm using my phone. Yes, so for those of you that don't have enough remotes, this will work perfectly yes. for you. There's three heat levels. So that's what the red is the highest, green is the middle, and then blue is like the coolest. It's cool. Yep, and then you have the power indicator for the actual battery. Okay, so now opening the next thing. Okay. We've got this, which is either a vest or a coat. I think there's two different coats. One is okay. for you guy. and one is for me. That okay. one I think is yours. So there's a coat. Throw that out of the way. We're gonna see how this works real quick. So it comes in a nice thick plastic bag. We're gonna see how this looks. Looks like a nice coat though. And they also have 
I think they specialize more in like motorcycle and outdoor gear because they yeah. have like pants and like full riding stuff. Okay, so this has a really heavy duty thing for pulling your zipper up and down. That's nice, I like that. And then they have the labels here. Okay, so we'll just pop this off. That is re-insertable. Okay, so this would be a 2XL for me. And you guys know about what size it is. I can feel the battery up here. I'm assuming that's probably not in. It's just a box, okay? So we're gonna leave this laying down right now. We pop out the battery, see what we need to do to get that going. Okay, this one came with a USB-A to USB-C that's white in color. Um, not that I really care, but let's go ahead and show the people if this works. We'll just grab another regular USB-A style charger, plug it into a standard AC outlet in our case. Looks like a little bit bigger battery this time, which stands to reason. There's a screen there. This is five volts at two amps called for. This is 9,800 milliamps at uh, 5,600 milliamp hours. Okay, so there's in and out. So you can use a USB A, or excuse me, USB C or USB micro to charge. And then there's an output that is a USB plug as well. So you can see this. I don't know what that means. Does that mean? 63%. Wait a second, hold on. Yeah, that's 63, but I don't understand why it's flashing and I don't know what that means. To me it's charging. And why is one number flashing? It's know. kind of strange. So we're gonna let that go for a minute. And same thing, we'll go ahead and get things thrown away and then we'll throw this coat on real quick. If you wanna show them the user's mm -hmm. guide. And this has, again, it's washable without the battery pack in it. And it's got a couple of different heating options. I'll show you this real quick. He's getting that. So you can heat just the back or you can heat the front, like where the pockets are. And I think if you push this, I think if you push this multiple times, it's going to change your heat levels. And I think the button, the color of this will change so you know what heat level you're at. And the battery plugs in down here in the front pocket inside, it looks like. So that's a zipper pocket too. Yes. All right, so let's see how this thing fits. Let's look at it. All right, so if you guys want a hood, it's got a detachable hood, zipper style detachable. It's got a Velcro style attachment here on the front. Looks like a pretty heavy duty zipper. Inactivity alarm. So we'll just shut this off, okay? That's what you guys were hearing in the background. Okay, so inside of here, we've got smooth, we've got instructions. Looks like a recommended laundry tag. Okay, so we'll just throw this thing on, see how it fits. For being 2XL, it's pretty dang tight on my arms. That's definitely more of a form fit than what I would usually have. Typically wear. But 2XL, that's pretty tight. Might go, for you, it might go under something with your white one extra protection outside. Okay. So there's that. Then there's zippers on the sides. You can stuff your hands in there easily. I can feel the plugs right here. They're inside the inside, okay? So if you want to put in your battery, then you have to unzip the coat. This still says 63. So I'm gonna unplug it. I'm not sure why it still says 63. Unzip here. Grab your plug, which is covered up, and then put it onto this. Okay. So that's in there. Drop it in the pocket. All right now my mic is going to get covered up so i apologize if i get quieter i'll try to talk louder 
So then, actually, sorry guys. Pop your mic out for a second. I'll have to take you out here. So we have a power button. There so it goes. It's on. Red. So push it again. Kind of hard to see. Here, you do it. So if you long press it to turn it on and then short press it will change so there's the low setting and then it just goes right back to high. So you can toggle through. So you can just do the front, that would be your pockets, and then there's the back. Okay. So we'll see how long it takes you to get warm. And <clears throat> I was just gonna say, I'm sure it's gonna go pretty quick. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's not cold in here. So no, it's not. It's not an issue. And so I wanna look at it in the mirror and see if the mic where you're going to be able to put your mic. Yeah. So what we'll probably do is I can definitely feel the arms are tighter than I would or normally wear. And I would normally not wear a hood. Yeah. You'd probably take the hood off. So I would normally take the hood off, but if you want the hood up, see what I'm talking about. This thing is fairly tight on my arms. So if you're a bigger guy, you probably want to get a three X and not a two X. I think two X is the biggest. But. Okay. Well, there you so go. You keep, yeah, that would be a So now you know. Is your there mic. even a place to put Ooh. your mic? I wonder if we'll clip your mic out here, unzip this pocket, and clip your mic here. <laughs> Don't look ridiculous at all. This is usually what the camera crew looks like, though. Yes. Okay, so I'm getting sweaty already, so it must be working. Okay, so we'll turn so, you off. <sighs> for now. You had me at heated coat. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a second and reset and come right back. All right, so we're gonna open the other vest thing just to see what it has to offer. Now I'll admit there's times when I'm in the cold and I really don't wanna be cold. Let me give you an example. If I do powered paragliding and it's cold out, I wanna be able to stay warm. The trouble is I have load bearing harnesses all over me. So I would have to get something that works with that. And so that's part of the reason why this is helpful for me is because when it's really, really cold, when you're flying at 25 miles an hour in the wind the whole time, unobstructed by any trees, and it's always windy when you're flying 25 miles an hour, then that is one thing that could be really handy. Okay, so real quick, we'll pull that out. Uh, looks like this one is gonna be our vest. No, oh, this is a coat. This that's a coat. Me. Okay, so this has the same exact style of battery except that it has a 2550 75 and 100 it's got a dc out a type c in and a usb out so this would work for that coat that the camera crew now has on this is 2xl yes. so it's definitely it's not necessarily big. right but it does have a good spot for the mic it does which is good we weren't sure that that was going to work so we're going to plug this one in and just show you this does have a black usb a to USB-C, as you can see here. Not especially long cables though, just keep in mind. The white cable that came with the other coat is longer, so we'll just show you real quick. They are going to both work. Okay, that comes up with a flashing light showing that we're somewhere between 50 and 100, probably at the 75 range. And then I'll just switch this out, show you that the cable that comes with it works. USB-A, again, to USB-C. Now, the thing that's nice about the code is you actually have the option to use, and by the way, this does have a protective element over it. Get down there so they can see that flashing light. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so basically, when and if you decide to get one of these cold weather items, follow the links in the video description below. We'll have those linked for you so you can help support Brian Phillips RC. It's always helpful to us when you guys do that because if you see something that we review, then obviously these companies that we work with are trying to get to your dollars and cents and that's fine. And we never mean to strong arm you because maybe this is a terrible fit for you. Maybe you live in the desert, um, but it gets cold in the desert, just saying. All right, so let's open this thing. Ziploc bag, pop it out. Looks like this one's more of a fleece style. Okay. Same kind of buttons, except it's got a neck warmer, front pockets, and then back. And this one is in an XL size, US. In Asia, it's 2X. In Europe, it's XL, okay? 
So they have different size classifications. So just depending on what type of body type they're expecting. If you're American, then you're bigger. If you're European, you're bigger. If you're Asian, you're smaller, evidently. Yep. So that's more of like a fleece sweatshirt Looks like, kind of. Like a sweatshirt. Style. It's got a hoodie. Yep. Big, thick uh, zipper. I like this little handle. That's always nice. It's got their emblem on it. Raised letters. Plastic. Feels like suede or something. Feel it. It's not suede. It's like fleece like lined inside. Really comfy feeling. Yeah. It's all one piece. This, this one definitely is going to be tight. Yeah. But that one fits the camera crew pretty good actually for being a two X. And ironically, this one seems to fit pretty good too. I feel like for being two X, that one is almost exactly this size. Mm. They do have measurements on their website too, if you're not sure on the sizing. So I feel like that in a 2X would probably fit you better than this in a 2X. In a 2X. Sorry, I hit, hit my mic. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So that works. And this will hopefully make your outdoor extravaganzas, flying radio-controlled airplanes, helicopters, quads, VTOLs, and leaf blowing all the less painful, even though it's cold out. And that's one of the things we do here on Brian Phillips RC is we try to take you from the box to the air, and we want to help get you there in a way that's going to help you have success. And that's why when we see a, a new helicopter like this and we think, you know, these manufacturers, they're all gonna make it sound like anybody can fly anything. And we know that's just a load of malarkey. Because really at the end of the day, if you start with the wrong helicopter or the, long, the wrong airplane, you're gonna probably have a pretty bad experience and you're likely to quit. And we try to prevent that. That's called a one and done. And that's one of the biggest things we do here on Brian Phillips RC is we try to help get you into the right helicopter, quad VTOL or leaf blower for your skill level. <laughs> the right leaf blower. That's right. Hey, um, your mic is going to be, you're covered up probably a little tiny bit there. Leaf blower. <laughs> we used that leaf blower yesterday, people. Seriously, we, we use the leaf blower the to clean our dryer vent. <laughs> And it probably saved our family's lives again, <laughs> again. So at the end of the day, we love doing this stuff for you. And we know that sometimes we have some, some suffering involved in supporting Brian Phillips RC. Uh, but we do love doing it for you. And we hope you guys will return the favor when you decide to buy stuff, like whether it's this helicopter and they're ready to fly or bind and fly setup. Remember, you can plug in DSMX, but it's not going to be SLRX2. It's going to be SRR. SRXL, not mm -hmm. SRXL2. Okay, so it's a DSM plug, DSM2 or DSM, but not in the SR, SRXL2. The newer version has four wires and these have three, okay? So when you're looking to purchase, in fact, pause and we'll show you more what I'm talking about. All right, so what I meant to say in not so many words is when you're plugging in here, this says DSM2, DSMX, okay? But there's three pins, okay? Three, one, two, three. Now, you can do PPM S bus through that port, and that's fine. But if you're gonna use one of these micro receivers, you gotta get this style that's DSMX, and it's got three wires. This isn't SRXL2 like these. These are S SRXL2s, okay? SRXL2. This one doesn't say SRXL2. God forbid they would just say SRXL. Right. Because that means that this has four wires mm -hmm. and this has four wires, okay? They changed the protocol a little bit on the wiring here, okay? Because there is a serial control line that comes from the device, the flight controller in most cases when you're using this type of device that says, I am ready to bind. And so the flight controller demands the bind function. Whereas this has a built-in button and a button, this one does not. So it's a different function and it's a different style. So the way you bind that is usually with, you use this in tandem with another DSMX receiver. You plug this in as a satellite, you bind, and then you just shut things down and then you pull this out and you put it on there and you can fly your Yujing F280 with your NX10 or your NX8 or your, you know, IX20, whatever it happens to be. Okay, that's what we wanted to say real quick, just so I don't confuse you 
And if you need, if you need to bind me, use the Redcon CM921 or the Lemon RX10 channel to bind <laughs> banner checks and whatever. This would be the Brian so Phillips I, RC That's my That's my official note Does right there. Does not come with it. So yeah, so basically whatever you've got lying around that still binds like that. Yeah. Okay, see, <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not always as simple as you want it to be. Because it's ironic because these ones have the bind buttons on them and you probably won't need them. And this one doesn't, and but you probably will. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, anyway, thanks, whoever designed that. So, guys, at the end of the day, Yuzhang RC F280, 280 millimeters of pure delight on the main rotor, okay? So, just keep in mind, 6S, not probably a beginner choice, uh, but we're going to show you how it works. And then, obviously, we've got these uh, Kimimoto uh, warm gear, and I'm not sure if we'll go ahead and just film in this or if the camera crew will just like wear both layers we'll take them to be on fire while I'm filming in my normal attire. Yes. But we do appreciate you guys enduring and suffering with us in the cold because at the end of the day, we have a pond. It's not quite dug. Can we show them the, the Christmas trees? Show them the Christmas trees. Show them the Christmas trees. Oh. Yes, yes. This will be a Christmas extravaganza update. I have to update. go outside to show you the trees. Yeah, you can go outside. There's cats everywhere. So when, when Walmart clearances out their Christmas trees, Brian buys all of them. And I hope he remembers because he's still inside that his mic is on. So if you look, those seven trees over there, the big trees, we moved. Those would have all been in over here on this side. They got bulldozed. They would have ended up back there in that pile of trees. Um, we moved those up the hill. And then a couple of days ago... Brian and I planted 52, did we plant 52 trees? 52 plus the uh, eight. And then the, yep, the ones that we The moved. natural ones. So there's some of them over here, actually on this side of the house, you can kind of see how big they are. There's some of them over here. So some of these are dwarf blue spruce, and then some of them are, I can't think of what they are, they're dwarf, but they're the more Christmas tree Did you show them the containers ones. yet? I didn't show them the containers because they're hard to see from over here. Way over there in the distance. Yes, There's guys. Two shipping containers. Storage issues are palpable. For the doghouse. I mean, storage of airplanes. Yes, that's right. Way over there. We'll show you more on that in a minute. So when you get this style, by the way, we were just going to show you this, and I want to pause while I figured it out. This gets plugged in here, okay? And then that goes, like, way back here in the super awkward spot. And I'm just going to say, it's definitely awkward to get to it. But then once it's in it, since this is a felt shirt, you can go ahead and turn it on. Oh, yep, it's on. I can see the light. And you can get warmed up nicely, which is pretty cool. So thanks to Kemimoto for trying to keep us warm. My camera crew will love Mostly it. Mostly me. Mostly her. <laughs> so, yeah. The, the pond, as you can see, is not done. Uh, we had, we got frosted out, which sucks. And that's a uh, special thanks to the county for screwing things up. That's what you do best. Yep. That's 240,000 pounds of rock. That's called a check dam. That's gonna be a silt pond up here. That will be submerged underwater. So hopefully you won't really see it under normal circumstances. And then this will be probably one third bigger when he digs more material to make the dam. And the main drain pipe, which is 96 feet long by 36 inches wide, aluminized pipe, it's gonna go in, it's gonna make a turn, then it's gonna come out and make a slight turn. That's been built and it's sitting, waiting to be delivered. And then we have two 44 foot overflows that are 30 inches each, also made of aluminized pipe. The reason we're doing that is so that you guys can get a continuous flat dam, also known as a perfect place for the dam runway. <laughs> so you guys will see the dam runway hopefully in the very near future. And uh, as you can see, we have salvaged a lot of different trees in different areas, but we lost a lot. And so that's why we were showing our baby Christmas trees mm -hmm. that got moved because while we love flying in an unobstructed airspace. I tend to think that airspaces that don't have any tree backdrops make for kind of a boring filming experience. 
and also trees give visual interest and depth perception. So if you like flying in a big wide open field, that's fine and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that it's a lot harder for us to show representation of speed and perspective without trees. So the trees are actually very important for us. Plus it helps block views of the neighbors that are building houses. Yep. So, all right guys, that's all you get. This should hopefully answer all your questions about the helicopter and the coats. And we're gonna be back with more. Guys, this is Brian Phillips RC. You know you can't get rid of me that easy. And even though we've been sick three times over Christmas and we have had busy things happening like planting the 52 trees in one night, that's the sort of things that we do. And we also, we have five more to plant too. <laughs> and then we were supposed to be moving trees, but we got so much rain, we got rained out on that. And fortunately we were able to get the container delivered when we did the second one. The first one we got delivered in the dark. Super fun. This is what happens. It's only a little cold and windy. Yes. Where was my heated coat then? Not here. No. So guys, now you have it directly from the source on Brian Phillips RC. We're here to serve you in the RC community, whether it's keeping you warm or keeping the leaves off your driveway. We'll help you do it. And we want you guys to have the best possible experience. And so if you have questions, leave them in the comments below. We'll try to get to them. If you wanna buy something and we didn't mention it already in the video, all you have to do is look no further than the video description below and you can buy stuff there. That'll help support us with small commissions from people like the Kimo Moto or Kimi, Kimi, Kimi Moto, sorry. Or if you're buying uh, Yuzhang from RC Going, we have links to them. They've been really good to work with and a lot better than the other competitive offering that we were working with before. We feel like they're taking better care of you. you guys are buying a lot more helicopters and airplanes and things. So that's always good for us. And a lot of that comes down to price, customer service and shipping. Mm -hmm. And we understand that. So if you guys are worldwide shippers, you should be able to buy these type of products. And also you may notice that sometimes we review the cheaper stuff. And that is because we know everybody has a budget and sometimes we review way more expensive stuff and everybody has a budget. So we're not trying to alienate anybody when we do that. We just wanna make sure that everybody understands whether the stuff you hear about online is actually as good as the people say. And remember, none of these companies we work with owns our opinion. We tell them very clearly, we're gonna be truthful with you, our audience, because otherwise, what good are we? Not much good. So. Hopefully we answered your questions and got you excited about this heli. And if not, we apologize and repent and we'll do better next time. So stay tuned. It's right around the corner. More from Brian Phillips RC right away.